Congressman Mike Johnson from Louisiana joins us now to discuss where we go from here and how Congress is planning to respond to this. Congressman, uh, thank you so much for taking time out to join us. I know it's incredibly hectic for, for you, especially for you. I know you're, you sit on uh, the Committee for Armed Services. You deal with readiness. You also deal with cyber issues. Uh, a lot to unwrap here, but I, I have to, I, I'd like to get your reaction to just some of the, we really heard a lot of silence from our leaders, whether it was DOD, whether it was Pentagon. I mean, we heard this weird Zoom thing from CENTCOM just a little bit ago, uh, the president speaking. I, I, not a lot of, not a lot of answers has been, have been forthcoming. And I, it's weird to say that I think we've learned more from foreign journalists on the ground than we have from our own government officials. Are, how confident do you feel? I know you guys, you are all privy to information mm -hmm. that we are not. Where is your level of confidence right now in being able to get, evacuate every American citizen and every Afghan asset out of Kabul? We are deeply concerned. We continue to have many more questions and answers that are being provided. You know, on the House Armed Services Committee, the Republicans began asking these critical questions of the president weeks ago, months ago. I wanted to know what the plan was when he said that he was going to withdraw from Afghanistan on this uh, political timeline that he created. There was apparently no plan now. We can all see it. Right now, we're desperate for answers. We're asking for them, and we're getting about the same amount of information as the American public gets. And it is shocking. It is inexcusable. And, and there will be a lot of people to answer for these mistakes, not the least of which is the President of the United States. Right now, we have zero confidence in this administration or what they're going to be able to do. It looks apparent to us this is going to get much worse before it gets better. And it's, it's I, I know the president said last uh, Friday, August 20th, I believe, that if there was any attack on service members, that there would be a swift and forceful response. And I, you know, I know, part, I know surrogates from the administration are saying, well, it wasn't the Taliban, it was ISIS-K, so that somehow exempts us from really having any kind of response on this. Should there be a response? What should the response be? Have you all had time to, to really, I mean, because I know things are coming in fast and furious. Uh, what are your thoughts on what kind of response the U.S. should have? What should be done, in your opinion, at this point? Well, at this point, we have a crisis on our hands. We have been showing weakness, and weakness invites aggression, as Ronald Reagan used to always remind us of the mm -hmm. peace through strength doctrine. Now, right now, our enemies are having a great time with this, our adversaries are, and, and the terrorists right around the airport there, where you still have innocent civilians and apparently maybe thousands of Americans still left behind enemy lines. And so we need to show strength right now. We need to let them know we're not pulling troops out of this situation until we get the Americans out. You know, Kevin McCarthy yeah. is the Republican leader in the House, and he has called on Pelosi to bring all of us back to Washington, bring Congress into session right now so that we can do everything within our power as the legislative branch to help get our Americans out. And, and if the White House won't lead, and apparently they're not, there may be other voices that need to step up. We have zero Democrat leadership from White House, from the White House to Capitol Hill, and this is a very dangerous situation. Now, you, you bring up the House Speaker. I think she was, I, I was looking at our timeline today. In fact, we, we're, we're something that we've been discussing today. She looks as though she was very busy talking about Women's Equality Month or something like that uh, and hasn't really responded about this. I know they were very interested in going up and showing support for Gavin Newsom out in California. The president, vice president, and House Speaker were planning to go out there for, I don't know if that's still going to happen. It just seems like their, their priorities aren't where they should be. Uh, your thoughts on, on the reaction of our allies, G7 apparently disappointed, headlines that Biden broke NATO. Is that, is that the real severity of the situation? We think it is. Our foreign relations are, are in tatters now. We, we have done more damage. We, we believe, I believe, that this is the greatest national security foreign policy blunder, at least in my lifetime, maybe when it's all said and done, maybe in all of American history. The, the, the ramifications of this will go on for a long, long time. If, we, if, if America projects weakness, everybody's in trouble. It, it's not important. The peace through strength doctrine is not important just for Americans. It's, for important. it's important for the whole world, all peace-loving people mm -hmm. everywhere, because the perception of a strong America is important for stability around the globe. We are the only nation in the world that can project force like we do. We, we are the, the, the last bastion defenders of freedom. And when we look weak, tyrants and terrorists everywhere are in power. And that's the problem right now. We, we have concerns about our safety and security here on the homeland because the border's been open, as we all know, since January. We know that there are dangerous people on the terrorist watch list who've gotten through our southern border and are here in our homeland. We're coming up on the 9-11 anniversary. It, it, it's just a worst case scenario. And so much of this was completely avoidable. It was predictable 
should have never happened. And the buck does stop at, at Joe Biden's death. You mentioned predictable, Congressman. There was a, a, a lot of discussion, but not a lot of national media attention, not enough anyway, on how the Taliban was able to roll into all these provincial towns so quickly and how so many people there didn't seem surprised. And of course, some of the stories coming out were, well, it was because they were using WhatsApp, uh, the Facebook-owned, American-based Facebook-owned WhatsApp as their digital headquarters. And they were able to uh, target messages to certain parts of, of Afghanistan as they were coming into it, even asking people who were with the now former Ghani regime if they wanted to surrender. Here's a the number. They kicked it out on WhatsApp. You can surrender and we'll, we'll make a, we'll set up a, we'll schedule you in for your surrender. Uh, I am shocked at how anyone could say that it was not predicted. And I know that we've heard this from Mark Milley and Lloyd Austin. Were they not watching this? I mean, they monitor everything else for January 6th stuff. Was it beyond them to look at WhatsApp to figure out what the Taliban was doing in Afghanistan? They are either inept or they're being dishonest with the American people. We've been given a little bit more information in a classified setting on some of that. But my personal belief is, I can tell you what I think is obvious to every American. We have the best intelligence capability in the world. We have the strongest military. They knew that these contraindicators are there. They knew what the risk was. I think they probably did say this to the president, but as he as he told all the American people, he's the commander in chief. He made the unilateral decision. He and Kamala Harris, she was the last one in the room, infamously she's admitted to, they made this decision for political reasons. And there is going to be blood on their hands. There's a lot of innocent people that are going to die for this. And our own security here in the homeland is in jeopardy now because they were trying to score political points.